Like, I guess, millions of people, I so admired the novel, Memoirs of a Geisha. When I heard that it was going to be made into a film, I just said to everyone I know, oh, I would love to do the score for Memoirs of a Geisha. A number of years ago, John sent me this book. He just said, maybe one day, we'll, we'll put that to music. John Williams said to me when we first met that he is never in his career asked to do a film. And he said, but I'm asking to do this one. That was overwhelming because I thought, gosh, would we be lucky enough to get John Williams? He was looking for a challenge and he was looking for something different. John Williams said to me right at the beginning, I want to hear what you have to say. I'm not going to go off and do this separately and then sort of hand you a score and say, here it is. I looked at the film with Rob, and we spent two or three days going through from beginning to end. He had a lot to say, mostly about feeling and balance with other scenes. The moment where she gets caught. I love the idea. <laughs> the key that I was looking for really had to do with what I've come to call Sayuri's theme. I felt if I could get that right, that that would be the key to the foundation upon which the score could be built. There's a beautiful conceptual idea that John created that's in the film, and that is that the cello is Sayuri. It's her voice in the film. Outside you wear this, inside this. We don't display our naked feet like monkeys. It's not flesh we are selling here. This is a geisha house. Remember to always honor the Sokia. You listen, you learn. Now, get to work! Rob was excited about the idea of a cello, particularly since solo instruments would possibly describe solitude of this little girl or her isolation from her age group. What's amazing is that we had Yo-Yo Ma play her theme. So you have Yo-Yo Ma playing Sayuri, and then the chairman is represented by the violin. Now, I'm a geisha too. <laughs> so you are. And the violin is played by Isaac Perlman. I do remember John Williams coming to me and saying, you know, I was thinking about Yo-Yo Ma and Isak Perlman playing the solos. What do you think? And he had to sort of pick me up off the floor <laughs> after I'd passed out before I said, uh, yeah, that sounds good. Sayuri seems to be driven in her life by this one moment of kindness that's extended to her by the chairman when she's a child. At that moment, we have a violin solo, which is played by Isak Perlman in the manner of a kind of valse triste, which is to say a sad waltz, but one that is imbued with a loving feeling. The trick is to make it as though it has been shot and recorded at the same time. And that's what this is, you know, you look, you look at the thing and then immediately you get a certain feeling, at least I did, a certain feeling of how to, how to approach the piece. John, he's such a great composer, such a great writer of music, that a lot of the intentions are in the way that he's written it. And if there's more that's needed, you know, he might, he might say something. 
but generally not. I see, said the black. If he were to want something of a different character, we can use very simple language. It doesn't have to be technical at all. If somebody says, you know, it should sound a little bouncier, that's all I need to know. And for bouncy, I've got several things I can do. It could sound a little bit more uh, introverted. Oh, yeah. Just start on the B. The B might be simple. I got some introverted stuff in my brain that I can do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what we basically try to do is give me a mood, give me a, a without the analytical, uh, technical, technical jargon that goes with it, and then you do it. for me was a terrific challenge just generally and and also very specifically in the area of the Japanese ethnic instruments the koto for example which is an instrument that has 13 strings and can be tuned at will more or less one two three and also the shakuhachi which is the famous Japanese flute so I tried to feel those players into performing with the orchestra and with Yo-Yo Ma and with Itzhak Perlman and so on. some players where we could first record the orchestra and then superimpose their solo work. Bob Marshall's background as a choreographer has left an imprint on Geisha. There are set pieces in Memoirs of a Geisha that definitely have that feel as though they were dance numbers within a dramatic story. And that fantastic montage of preparation. has drums in the middle of the section, which are almost a suggestion of a sacrifice, almost, that this child is being offered to a Mayan god somewhere. And the word showmanship is a very positive thing in Rob's case, because I do have a feeling that his sense of all of this is he's delivering an evening to an audience in the same way that you would a theater. Every one of us was stretching and reaching past what we do, and trying to inhabit this foreign, beautiful, exotic world. 